Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chilly and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. In my last video, I gave you four tips that will help beginners create polished and professional looking designs. Now I'll be giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use Figma and put everything you learn into practice. If you haven't watched the last video, don't worry, you can watch it after. I'll have it linked in the description below. The great thing about Figma is that it's free to get started. It's great for collaborating, kind of like a Google Doc. You can use it on any computer, Mac or PC, via the browser, or you download the desktop app. Just go to figma.com to get started. Just go to figma.com to create an account, or you can sign up using your Gmail. So this is the final design that we'll be creating. This is the wireframe I started with. Let me show you how I did it. First, we have to create a frame. You can do this in the top left corner, or you can press F on your keyboard. Here on the right hand panel, you can see there are some preset sizes. We want a mobile phone size. You can choose any size phone you want. This has been my go-to for years. I'm a little bit set in my ways. Next, we're going to add a grid. This will be our guideline as we design. So click on adding a grid and we want to create columns. So change the number of columns to four. And then in terms of the spacings within these columns, we want a margin of 16 which are the outside, and a gutter of eight pixels, which are the little swim lanes in between. Next is colors. As you can see, I already have a color palette, which we learned how to do in my last video. And here I am saving the colors to the document as color styles. So they are easy to use when designing. So you just go here next to fill and click plus, and you name it, and then you save it. I'll demonstrate how to use color styles. So we've got this rectangle, we go to those four dots and we select the colors that we saved before. Now we can get rid of this. Next is typography. So these are my text styles and I'm using the font Inter. To add text, go up here in the top left corner or you press T on your keyboard and then you draw a text box and start typing. You can change the properties here in the right panel and change the color of it. You can also select a color we added earlier. Here I've added my logo and I am using these buttons here to center align it. If you press option on your keyboard with your object selected, you will see how far your object is from the edges or from any other object. You can use this Y axis to move up and down. So we want that 16 pixels away from the edge or you can just nudge it with your arrows. Next, we're going to turn this into this dark blue. Okay, now we are gonna add a rectangle. So top left corner or you press R on your keyboard. We're making the bottom navigation. It is a height of 56, which is already a multiple of eight. And then next I'm adding my icons. So I'm just going to pop them there and make sure they're all selected. And we can use this to make sure that they are evenly spaced horizontally. If you want to play around with the spacing between them, you can do that over here in this panel. I zoomed in to check if it was centered and pressing option, I can see the pixel measurements. Now we wanna make sure that the icons are aligned to each other. So we can use this to align them all to the center. Now we wanna add text to the navigation. So we want it small, so we are going to go back to our textiles and use the properties for the caption size, which is size 12. And we're gonna space it to be four pixels you can use four pixels for smaller objects. And then I'm going to group it by selecting it and pressing Command G. Okay, let's center it to the background and check the spacing and it is eight pixels below and above. Now we're gonna duplicate the text by copying and pasting it. Using this button here, it makes sure that the text box grows with the text that's inside it. And then we're gonna group that as well. I'm checking to make sure that we have a four pixel space and also aligning it to the top of the other group. And then do the same with account. So let's change the background of the menu bar, make that white. And we wanna create a line. So we can do this by creating a drop shadow. So you go into effects, click plus, and it's created a drop shadow, but we can't see it because it's under here. It's outside of the frame. So let's change the settings to put the drop shadow above. So we're gonna make it zero. And as you can see the line there and turn the blur down and there you go. Next, I want to make the grid 
grey so it's less distracting so I can see what I'm doing behind it. Let's change the background to blue. I just selected the frame and chose our saved blue using the panel and here I'm adding a white card. I want to put the card behind the menu so I select it right hand click and send to back. I'm going to use this rectangle over here to demonstrate rounding corners. You use this little button here as you can see all four corners are being rounded but if you only want to round off like one or two corners which we want to do with this card you press this which makes the corners independent of each other and we are only going to round off the top corners and then turn that way. Now we're going to create tabs so the user can move between all the classes available and the classes that they've booked. So we added our text, duplicating that and changing that to booked. Now we are adding some color to show which page is being selected. We're gonna align this so it fits the width of two columns. As you can see, the box is above the text. What we're gonna do is right click the text and bring to front. You can also do this by moving the layers on the, on the panel on the left, where you move them up and down. Okay, now we want this a little bit. Let's change the height to 40 and align it again with both of those selected. And round the corners, align that, and then select, move it into place, and then select the shape and make it light blue. I forgot to add color to the menus because these are grouped which will make it harder to select the individual icons. If you press command as you are selecting, it lets you select through the group and only select one element. So we're gonna make those blue and then and red for the selected state. Okay, we're gonna add another rectangle. So press R on your keyboard. This is for the calendar dates. Gonna make that a bit longer and round off the corners. And then we're gonna add the text. I think I'm gonna make that less bold. And then we're gonna group those, all three of those elements, and then duplicate it. So you can do that by pressing Command D. If you hold Shift, it will make sure that it is it stays in line. So the one that is selected, we're gonna keep that bold, and the other one, we're gonna turn it white with a light blue stroke and change the date. And then we're gonna duplicate that again, press Command D, and then hold it in place as you move it and keep it eight pixels apart. So now, if we keep pressing Command D, Figma is going to repeat your last action and then duplicate it in place. And then now all you have to do is go in and change the days, the dates. Next, we're gonna select all of these dates by just dragging across. As you can see, it's also selecting the card in the background and we don't want that to happen. So, so we're gonna press Shift and select that card to deselect it and group these up. But this time we're not going to use Command G for grouping. We're going to use an auto layout frame to group this. This is a smart way of grouping. So if you decided you don't actually want these spacings to be eight pixels and you wanted them to be 16, you just go and change it here in the auto layout properties. And right now they are laid horizontally. And if you wanted to change that, you just press this and there they are. Another thing you can do within this group, which is very smart, is that you can move things within it. Normally you would have to like remeasure all the spacing and move everything around. So you just drag whatever element you want and then move it and Figma moves everything else in place with the right spacing. Next, we're going to create filters. So again, press R for rectangle and we're gonna round that off. Make white buttons with a light blue stroke and then add some text and a chevron icon for a drop down. I'm going to resize that to 40, group all of these things and then duplicate it and change that text. Here I am checking the spaces between them and they are 16 pixels. So I'm creating a rectangle and aligning it to the grid and here is the image I want to use. We're going to add create another little rectangle and this will act as a stencil for our image. Make sure that the spacing of the rectangle is 16 pixels on all sides. And let's just adjust that size. So we're gonna move the image on top by either bringing it to front or using the layers panel on the left. So if you select the image along with the rectangle and then right click, select use as mask, that turns the rectangle into a stencil. 
and you can do this for any shape. Make sure that these are in a group. This will happen automatically, but if it's not, just double check that because that will cause you a lot of issues. And here I've rounded the corners of the rectangle. I've just selected that and rounded those corners and then rounded the corners of the bigger card. And let's make that white. We don't have white in our style guides. Let's just select it from here. And because it's white, we can't really see the outline. So let's give it a drop shadow. So go on effect, press plus, and there you go. But that is a bit too harsh. And we want it to align with our colors. So let's select a blue. Let's make the opacity 20%. And then I'm gonna play around with these effects until I'm happy with the drop shadow. So now onto text. These are the class details. Actually, we should have saved the textiles like we did the colors. This will make this so much quicker. So let's do that right now. Select your text and then on the text bit, press these little four square dots and press plus. And then let's name this color style and then do the same with the rest of our text. Okay, now we're gonna use that text style that we added, there you go. And then we're gonna do the same with these, but we're gonna select body. I'm gonna move this here to make better use of the space. And with this, it's gonna be caption size. Let's align the heading to the image and align the text. Now let's create our booking button. So press R for a rectangle and then turn that blue, add some text and center align the text. And let's change the style and round those corners. Remember to keep checking the spacing and let's make sure those are aligned. But as you can see, the rectangle and the book text is not grouped. So let's select both of those, center align them and group them with command G. Maybe let's make that a bit taller and let's make it a bit thinner. I think that's why the spacing's looking a bit weird. So I'm gonna change the size of this rectangle because I feel like I just need a bit more space in this card. If, if you feel like your design is not looking quite right, it's either the spacing between the objects is not consistent or maybe you just need a bit more white space between things. Okay, that looks much better. Now we want to select all these things and group them. So let's just click and drag. As you can see, we've again selected that card in the back. Press shift and click on it to deselect it. And let's group all of these. But if you don't wanna keep selecting this back card, you can just right click it and lock it. Now let's add more classes, duplicate, command D, and press that again for another class. And the spacing is automatically added. So we then wanna add this image. So I've cut it and I've just pasted it on top of the image. So I've selected the image first before pasting. And then let's update this text and do the exact same for this yoga class. So we want one of these buttons to be fully booked. So let's change that to a light blue and let's change the text to a gray. So this is where you find colors that are not in your color styles. And that is our final design. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and you're feeling ready to start your own designs. Feel free to tag me when you're sharing your designs and I'll give you some feedback. And I have a giveaway. I'll be giving away a one hour mentoring session each week for the next few weeks. All you have to do is make sure you're signed up to my mailing list and engage in my content on some of my platforms. So comment, subscribe, share on any of my social platforms. So if you're starting out and need some tailored advice or you need some help refining your portfolio or you're already a designer and need some career advice, this could be for you. I'll be picking one person each week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.